Hello everyone, welcome back to this video. The subject co subject is cryptography. The subject code is 21C642. Now we are going to discuss about the module 2 classical encryption technique. These are the vision mission of the department. In today's topic, we are discussing about the pastry cipher. William Strollings is a textbook cryptography and network security principles and practice. Textbooks to be referred. Traditional block cipher structure. So under this, we're discussing about Feastel cipher. So this Feastel proposed that we can approximate the ideal block cipher by utilizing the concept of a product cipher, which is the execution of two or more simple ciphers in sequence in such a way that the final result or product is cryptographically stronger than any of the component ciphers. The essence of the approach is to develop a block cipher with a key length of k bits and a block length of n bits. This allows a total of 2 bar k possible transformations rather than the 2 n factorial transformations available with the ideal block cipher. In particular, Feastel proposed the use of a cipher that alternates substitutions and permutations where these terms are defined as follows. Substitution each plain text element or group of elements is uniquely replaced by a corresponding ciphertext element or group of elements. Permutation A sequence of plain text elements is replaced by a permutation of the sequence. There is no elements are added or deleted or replaced in the sequence. Rather, the order in which the elements appear in the sequence is changed. In fact, this uh, Feastels is a practical application of a proposal by Claude. Shannon to develop a product cipher that alternates confusion and diffusion functions. So we look at, uh, next at these concepts of uh, diffusion and confusion here. So this uh, confusion and diffusion functions and then present this pixel cipher. But first it is worth to that commenting on this remarkable fact that the Feastel cipher structure which dates back over a quarter cent century and which in turn is based on Shannon's proposal of 1945 is the structure used by a number of significant symmetric block ciphers currently in use. So the Feastel structure is used for triple data encryption algorithm that is TDEA which is one of the two encryption algorithms along with AES approved for general use by the national Institute of Standards and Technology. So the Feastel structure is also used for Institute of Standards and Technology. And this Feastel structure is also used for several schemes for format preserving encryption, which have recently come into prominence. The Camellia block cipher is a Feastel structure. It is one of the possible symmetric ciphers in TLS and a number of other internet security protocols. So this diffusion and confusion this terms uh, diffusion and confusion were introduced by Claude Shannon to capture the two basic building blocks for any cryptographic system. Shannon's concern was to thwart cryptanalysis based on statistical analysis, statistical characteristics. So the reason is as follows. Assume the attacker has some knowledge of the statistical characteristics of the plain text, for example, in a human readable message in some language. So the frequency distribution of the various letters may be known or there may be words or phrases likely to appear in the message. So if these statistics are in any way reflected in the ciphertext, the cryptanalyst may be able to deduce the encryption key, part of the key, or at least a set of keys, likely to contain the exact key, what Shannon refers to as a strongly ideal cipher. All statistics of the ciphertext are independent of the particular key used. The arbitrary substitution cipher in such a cipher which is impractical other than recourse to ideal systems Shannon suggests two methods for frustrating statistical cryptanalysis that is diffusion and confusion in diffusion the statistical structure of the plain text is dissipated into long-range statistics of the ciphertext this is achieved by having each plain text digital effect the value of many ciphertext digits generally this is equivalent to having each ciphertext digit to be affected by many plain text digits. An example of diffusion is to encrypt a message of characters with an averaging operation. 
which is given by this expression. Adding k successive letters to get a ciphertext letter yn, one can show that the statistical structure of the plain text has been dissipated. Thus, the letter frequencies in the ciphertext will be more ne nearly equal in the plain text. The diagram frequencies will also be more nearly equal and so on. In a binary block cipher, diffusion can be achieved by repeatedly performing some permutation of the data followed by applying a function to that permutation. The effect is that bits from different posi positions in the original plain text contribute to a single bit of ciphertext. Every block cipher involves a transformation of a block of plain text into a block of ciphertext where the transformation depends on the key. The mechanism of diffusion seeks to make the statistical relationship between the plain text and ciphertext as complex as possible in order to thwart attempts to deduce the key. On the other hand, confusion seeks to make the relationship between the statistics of the ciphertext and the value of the encryption key as complex as possible. Again, to thwart attempts to discover the key. Thus, even if the attacker can get some handle on the statistics of the ciphertext, the way in which the key was used to produce your ciphertext is so complex. So, in this feastal cipher structure, the left hand side of the figure depicts the encryption structure proposed by Feastel. The inputs to the encryption algorithm are a plain text block of length 2w bits and a key k. The plain text block is divided into two halves, LE0 and RE0. The two halves of the data pass through n rounds of processing and then combine to produce the ciphertext block. Each round i has uh, as inputs LE i minus 1 and RE i minus 1 derived from the previous round, as well as the subkey derived from the overall k. In general, the subkeys are different from k and from each other. In figure uh, 16 rounds are used, although any number of rounds could be implemented. All rounds have the same structure. A substitution is performed on the left half of the data and this is done by applying a round function f to the right half of the data and then taking the exclusive or of the output of that function and the left half of the data. The round function has the same general structure for each round but is parameterized by the round subkey ki. Another way to express this is to say that f is a function of right half block of w bits and a subkey of y bits, so which produces an output value of length w bits. Following the substitution, a permutation is performed that consists of the interchange of the two halves of the data. This structure is a particular form of the substitution permutation network proposed by Shannon. So the exact realization of a feastal network depends on choice of the parameters and design features and that is block size, key size, number of rounds, subkey generation algorithm, round function. So larger block size means greater security. So greater security is achieved by greater diffusion. Larger key size means greater security but it may decrease encryption or decryption speed. The greater security is achieved by greater resistance to brute force attacks and greater confusion. Key sizes of 64 bits or less are now widely considered to be inadequate. The essence of the Feastel cipher is that a single round offers inadequate security but that multiple rounds offer increasing security. So greater complexity in this algorithm should lead to greater difficulty of cryptanalysis. Again greater complexity generally means greater resistance to cryptanalysis. There are two other considerations in the design of a Feastel cipher. Faster software encryption or decryption. In many cases, encryption is embedded in applications or utility functions in such a way as to preclude a hardware implementation. Accordingly, the speed of execution of the algorithm becomes a concern. Ease of analysis. Although we would like to make our algorithm as difficult as possible, the cryptanalyze that is great benefit in making the algorithm easy to analyze. If the algorithm can be concisely and clearly explained, it is easier to analyze that algorithm for cryptanalytic vulnerabilities and therefore develop a higher level of assurance as to its strength. DES, for example, does not have an easily analyzed functionality. <laughs> Feastal decryption algorithm. 
So then this process, a decryption with the phase star cipher is essentially the same as the encryption process. Using the cipher text as input to the algorithm, but use the sub keys in reverse order. That is, it uses kn in the first round, kn minus 1 in the second round, and so on, until k1 is used in the last round. This is a nice feature because it means we need not implement two different algorithms, one for encryption and one for decryption. So the same algorithm with the reversed key order produces the correct result. So this can be seen in the encryption process that is going down the left hand side and the decryption process going up the right hand side of our algorithm. So here we have a algorithm that is that can be seen through the equations. Thank you.